Hello there! Hello there! You are watching the new Video Gaming Faro's video review of science fiction slow shaded first person shooter called simply Red. Is the story there like the story in a porn movie? Expected but not that important as John McCarmack once said? Or will you get a full fledged science fiction story that can be compared to classics of the genre like Terminator or Blade Runner? Will you find a charismatic main character in the game? Is it just a common kill em all first person shooter or are there any innovative mechanics enhancing the gameplay? Is the game meant to be played just by the veterans of the genre or can it be also played by casual gamers? Are their level design and enemies interesting and variable or rather generic and boring? Isn't the experience from shooting spoiled by clunky controls? Will your sense be pleased by the game audiovisuals? Let's find it out together during the next few minutes spent by watching my red video review. So, the story and right. In the year 2052, the world has found a way to make infinite resources that would be very useful in the real world, especially nowadays, right? Thanks to this, the world has demilitarized that would be even better in reality. Because they don't need armies to protect themselves from wars. Kane, the racketeer, is sure something bad is going to happen due to this. And Kane is right. Because shortly after the world gets attacked by Arcotans, Aliens who want to conquer the world. It is up to Kane and his friends to stop Arcutans conquering the world. Does it sound like an innovative and interesting story to you? I guess not. So the story here proves John Carmack's philosophy. At least there are some funny dialogues between Kane and his teammates before the start of each mission. But let's leave the story and let's get to the most essential part of each game, the gameplay. After the short intro explaining the story where the main hero is given a mighty sword called Hyperblade by his teammate Fabian and where everything goes wrong after you are thrown directly to the first mission. There are first enemies. Mechanical spiders awaiting you and your Hyperblade, of course, behind the first door. Rag is a typical arcade first person shooter that could hardly deny its inspiration in legendary FPS games from the 90s like Doom or Duke Nukem 3D. You find yourself in the closed corridors where you are supposed to fight through many levels full of aliens and other robotical enemies. Rag is structured into chapters where your hero has to activate switches to proceed further and every chapter includes a boss battle. If you have ever played any old FPS from 90s, and I suppose you have had, as you would hardly be a gamer, you will get familiar with most of the game mechanics very soon. The design of Rag is mostly comparable with games that I have already mentioned. Doom or Duke Nukem 3D, where in every level are hell, armor, ammo, secret areas and new weapons to find. The game does not even try to pretend some kind of realism, after all it's a science fiction game where almost everything is allowed, so the main protagonist can carry all weapons at once and doesn't have to reload. And like in the good old days, the health and armor can be regained by health packs and armor that you can find through their build level. Okay. So far it sounds like a nice nostalgic trip to the era of first person shooters from the 90s, but we are in 21st century, so are there also any new ideas in the game? Yes there are, even though not so many. The first thing is that the game includes a kill chain system. If you kill many enemies in a short time, you can enable your weapons to perform a special attack that has a usually devastating effect on the nearby enemies. Not so innovative, but also not so frequently seen in the first person shooting. The other new thing is that you collect the coins throughout the levels. Once you collect 50,000 of them, you get an additional life. In the beginning you start with 3 lives, and if you lose lives, your hero has to start the level all over again from the beginning of the level. However, this is hardly a big motivation for collecting coins as there is a good quick save system in the game allowing you to save the game at any moment. When I saw the coins in the game I was thinking, hmm, that's great, I can probably buy some upgrades or improve some skills between the levels in the shop. Unluckily, there is nothing like that in a rag, which was kind of disappointing for me, I must admit. 
and da 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 that's all false. There are no other mechanics that would distinguish Rack from the 90s first person shooters. Okay, it was not too much, so let's have a look at who you will be fighting against and what you will be using for it. The enemy times can be split into two categories, aliens and robots. In the first category you will find small aliens shooting energetic projectiles at you that can be eliminated just by one shot from a pistol and bigger aliens shooting either direct or navigating energetic projectiles. These ones have slightly bigger endurance. In the second category you will find already mentioned mechanical spiders using melee attack and shooting flying spheres that are hard to shoot as they are constantly moving. From time to time you get attacked by the giant robots that can consume quite a big number of bullets before getting destroyed. These ones are not shooting but causing small earthquakes by smashing the ground, so you need to time your jumps precisely not to get hurt. And as I have mentioned before, at the end of each level there is a boss fight with a giant, and usually a robotical creature, with many hit points with devastating weapons and you need to fight a pattern in their behavior to successfully eliminate them. And that's all that I have seen during the first 3 or 4 chapters, so the variability of enemies is rather low. And same with the weapons. You will find standard weapons for the genre here, pistol, shotgun or pulse rifle. The most interesting weapon is probably Hyperblade. Quite a powerful sword that you bear from the very beginning and that can save you many projectiles. Despite the limited arsenal, the feel from shooting is satisfying and for example a shotgun has the exact effect that you would expect of it. How about the game environment and level design? Most of the time you will spend in generic corridors with many doors, switches, elevators, lava fields, arenas for big fights and switches that needs to be activated to open the way further. All of it is well known from the old Doom-like games. As many corridors look alike, one might get lost sometimes but thanks to the frenetic action you won't pay much attention to. The variability of the environment is also rather low. Most of the time you spend in some industrial complexes that are hard to distinguish from each other. I would say that even good old Doom has a bigger environmental variable. Devs could definitely put more effort into the game design. As for the game difficulty, the good thing is that you can select from the four levels of difficulty in the beginning and even on the second, casual difficulty, because that is what I am nowadays, a casual player, the game can be challenging as it's usually throwing many enemies at you at once. Yeah, yeah, like in the good old days. But thanks to the quick save system, the game is not frustrating and I'm sure that everyone will find the right difficulty setting for himself. The controls are also easy and responsive enough. You just need the move and keys, key for jumping and key for activating doors or elevators. Aiming and shooting is done by the mouse there. Simple and effective. As for the game audiovisuals, not everyone must like cel shaded graphics, but I personally like the cartoon style of the game, which makes the right graphics smooth, highly detailed and colorful. And the other plus is that it can be run in high resolution even on low specs machines. Well done! When it comes to music and sounds, there is nothing that will surprise you either positively or negatively. Music consists of tracks that remind you of old FPS games, but they can hardly pump up more adrenaline into your veins and create a better game atmosphere. Sounds are not bad, but I had a feeling that most of them I have heard in another first person shooters, so they are rather average. I know that I am moaning about the absence of dumping quite often, but it's real shame here that at least some funny one-liners are not dubbed as the main character seems to be a typical charismatic badass, but without his own voice. Do you remember the rough voice of John St. John, which really helped to build the game atmosphere in Duke Nukem 3D? Ok, let's finalize it here. Rack is definitely a nice tribute to the good old first person shooters from the 90s era. One can find many pros like the frantic non-stop action, sense of humor, the weapons effect, 
kill chains, challenging and not frustrating difficulty, responsive controls and beautiful social graphics. The game could be much better though if there were not some downsides like uninspiring story, generic level design, low variety of enemies and weapons and the absence of dubbing. First person shooters are usually not the best genre for family playing, but thanks to the star shaded graphics without the explicit graphical violence, I think that the game can be played by let's say 10 plus year old kids. Rank costs 10 euros on Steam, which is not so much, but you can wait for at least 50% discount, which I can recommend the game to buy for. Rank is a nice nostalgic trip to the era when first person shooters were mainly about shooting tons of enemies, constantly going after you and finding the path leading to the next level where you were doing the same again. It could have been done better for sure, but I can say that despite its flaws, I have enjoyed the time spent with Rai, and thus I'm giving it thumbs up and Video Gaming Fathers Index 7 minus out of 10. Recommended with some discount. Thank you for watching my Rai video review. Please do not forget to give it thumb up if you have liked it, and subscribe to my Video Gaming Fathers channel for more video reviews. Hope to see you soon again!